So, yeah, we knew that. Okay, let me get all situated here. <clears throat> So, um, tomorrow is Independence Day, and I don't know if you um, saw the notice that went out that I wrote, but I just want to kind of read part of it so that you have some idea about what we're going to do with all this paper and a pen. So what I wrote was, this weekend there will be many observations of Independence Day, a national holiday that commemorates the passage of the Declaration of Independence by the Continental Congress on July the 4th, 1776. This official document announced that the colonies would no longer be ruled by the British king or British law. The colonies would be an independent entity. Now, the reason I wanted to start with that is because this idea of independence is in our DNA as a country. So it's very much of a, a part of our national identity. Bobby, can you move the mic closer to your mouth? Uh, maybe. How's that? Much better. Okay, sorry. So I was asking myself the question, how independent are we, really? And that's where this talk came from. Just thinking about that question. Because that question is kind of in opposition of one of the Buddhist teachings that we follow which is that we are very dependent on one another, that we're not independent at all. We're connected to everything. So we're going to do a little exercise that I hope will help us see how dependent we are on one another, on um, this, these in institutions that we belong to, and all of that sort of thing. So. Let's begin. Um, Cornell, do you want to say something first? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm anxious to see where this goes. Oh, okay. Um, so take your paper and fold it in half any way you want to do it. So we have two columns or two sections. So on the first section, whichever one you want to start on, Write the question, <clears throat> get your pen again. who do I depend on? And then just start answering that question for yourself. Um, some things will be obvious. You know, we, we know we're dependent on our, our family and stuff like that, but some things may be not so obvious. So think about it and just write down whatever comes to your mind. <clears throat> So when you get um, kind of stuck, go outside the usual. For instance, um, I just thought about the mechanic that fixes our, our car. We depend on him. <laughs> so think about people like that.
And you might begin to start thinking about where does your food come from? I'll give you just another minute or two. And, um, you know, you can always come back to this if you think of something. So let's move to the other side of the, the other column in your paper and write this question. Who depends on me? It can be a group, not just one singular person. You may notice that some of the some of the words are the same. Who do I depend on and who depends on me? They they might be the same. I'll just give you an example. I depend on the farmer for my food, and the farmer depends on depends on me to buy it. pause and see if we can give some um, suggestions to one another. <clears throat> so going back to who do I depend on? Anybody want to share something they wrote? The people at the electric company. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Wife and children. Yeah. A veterinary clinic. Oh, good one. Yeah. So the vet and the people who work there. Yeah. My friends. Your friends? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Construction workers. 
Oh yeah, construction workers. I say everybody involved in building the roads. And We also depend, I just thought of this, we depend on the people <clears throat> who are driving on the roads with us. We depend on them to stay in their lane and to drive responsibly. Our health care providers. Farmers and ranchers, manufacturing industries, transportation industries, area construction. Yeah. yeah. So those are um, those are like a what construction. Um, so think about the person who's doing it. It's like that's the person who's really who we really depend on. You know, like the structure of the company, I guess it's, it is important, but the person who's actually delivering the services is really, the, have a big part of that too. really the one we depend on. Yeah. Our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Neighbors, yeah. And down the police force too. Mm -hmm. And the people who, uh, in other countries, who put together our phones. Oh, and all yeah. of our products in our house. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And the clothes we wear. A lot of workers. those come from, yeah. from factories and people sewing our clothes in Cambodia and China and India. Employees at Target? Sure. Yeah. Or, or any, any store we go to. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Yeah, Jim had said the internet and Google, people mm -hmm. are there. Because without that, you've got our source of different knowledge, information, new things, new stuff, whatever. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I wouldn't be able to do my regular job without it. So, that, those, those are great, just in the interest of time. Let's look at the other question who depends on me? Did you notice that some of the same, that there was some overlap there? A lot, most of them. Yeah. Did we, is there thing, anything we didn't mention that we wanted to bring up? Probably ourselves, nothing else to do. Well, it depends on me. I put uh, people in groups that I donate to. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Did anybody else put Sangha? Yeah, yeah, that's already on both. Yeah. <clears throat> that's on both lists yeah. to me. Um, anything else about that? Uh, uh, about, uh, Bobby mentioned about uh, the other people not crossing the lane in front of me. Uh, uh -huh. If you put that way, it's become too wide and, you know, the, our enemy not attacking us, right? <laughs> Something, it can be too wide, but I just wanted to be a little interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts from online people? Okay, turn your paper over. We have two minutes columns and two new questions, very similar questions. <clears throat> so instead of who do you depend on, just put what. What do you depend on? Which some of those things we said already will show up here as well. <clears throat> and then um, The other question, like the one on the that we already did, is what depends on you? So 
so many of the things we already talked about, what do you depend on, like the police, the healthcare workers, um, that would be the institutions that they belong to, like the hospitals and um, yeah, that sort of thing. You depend on the grocery store. For those of us of a special age, <laughs> which there aren't very many of us in here, um, Medicare, I depend on Medicare and Social Security. So depend on my car, which is why I have a good mechanic. <laughs> Anybody else want to share something that's on your list? Uh, put down natural processes such as sunshine, wind, plants producing oxygen, food, mm -hmm. rainfall. Yeah. Perfect. Definitely we depend on those things. Our very existence depends on those things. I'd say your air conditioner. Mm -hmm. you, would, you would live out here in big numbers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I put my house for shelter. Mm -hmm. And then my house depends on me to exactly. be fixed. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, whenever you're ready, you can kind of go to the other question as well. We'll just keep um, sharing as we go along. I depend on peace, hope, prayer. Mm. Peace, hope, prayer. I depend on the generosity of others. And in fact, the Dallas Meditation Center depends on the generosity of others. ask you one more question. Um, you don't have to write about this, but I just want you to think about it. So we're saying, who depends on you? What do you depend on? All these questions about depending. Um, so the question is, how dependable are you? Just ask yourself that question. So if somebody wants to depend on you, can
and they trust that you are dependable. That's another person. What about you, Jim? Are you well, dependable? Yeah, if I say I'll do something, I'll do something. Okay. If I tell you I'll be there at 6 o'clock, I'll be that's there. That's. I've had people say, oh, you did show up. Well, I said I would do that. So. Yeah. Okay. Just kind of checking you out. <clears throat> I decided I wasn't going to go to work, um, so at least I was respectable enough to go in with yeah. clothes on. <laughs> yeah. I like to think of myself as dependable, but I was looking at my list about what do I depend on. If I say I'm going to do something, I try to do it, but I had listed earth and natural processes and the ocean. And I thought, well, I don't know how dependable I am with, because at first I was thinking, well, the earth doesn't depend on me, but yeah, it does, actually. And I don't know, I, uh, so, so when I make a commitment to, I feel like I'm dependable, but maybe I need to make more commitments. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that is, I think, uh, if you really let that question you know, inspire you, then you recognize that, yeah, there's more. Um, so another word that's often used with independence is uh, freedom or liberation. And um, one of the, either one of those words will probably fit better with our Buddhist psychology. And that, for instance, if you wanted to talk about freedom, it's always freedom from something or freedom to do something. And in our contemplation before sitting, we say, or we read, let us transcend the boundaries of a delusive self liberating ourselves from the superiority complex, the inferiority complex, and the equality complex. So we're saying this every Sunday, somebody reads it, and I wonder if you've ever thought about that. Are, are you ready to liberate yourself from those delusions? Am I ready? Can I do it? You know, that's the question. Not am I ready to do it, but can I do it? Am I willing to do it? So the last thing I want you to think about, well, let me just read first this, um, a little bit of a, of a, uh, the announcement that, that Ananda sent out this week. Um, she, they talked about Paramahansa Yogananda saying that there is really no true freedom as long as we're still in bondage to our likes and dislikes. And so in order to do that, to release the energy bound up in our expectations that things ought to be our way, the way we have always been, or just somehow different. Um, so releasing those energies will liberate us. And what that says to me is be present. You know, if we let go of expectations that things will be a certain way, or if we just want something to be somehow different in this moment, um, that's just another way of saying you're not in the present moment. You're not really here now. 
for your judgments are so beautiful. They really are. And so, so, so back to your, your earlier question, can you free yourself from those delusions? Mm-hmm. That's why we call it practice. Exactly. And while we were meditating, I had this idea to, um, well, it sprang from this, the rest of the Ananda message, which I don't, I'm not suggesting that we do this particularly, but um, she, he said, Swami Kriyananda encourages us to make a mental bonfire every day and cast our desires, hopes, and disappointments into its flames. <laughs> It's then that we can experience true freedom, and that transformation of our inner reality will help lift everyone around us. Well, I I had a different idea in meditation. You know, to do this if you want, but rather than make a vow or um, intend that we're going to completely give up some delusion, whatever it is, whatever you choose. I think I will work better if I do it day by day. If I say now, today, I will truly practice giving up, you know, whatever it is. I haven't actually decided yet, but I'm ready to give up. So. I think that would be the next step for me. And I also want to just confirm the point that we started with, which is how independent are we, really? Can we see that we are not at all independent? We are just inextricably linked to everyone and everything. So we can't be independent, but we can also liberate ourselves from some of these um, distractions, delusions, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of a slippery slope. What is? So, so let's say you say to yourself tomorrow, I'm going to give up or I'm going to let go of this delusion. Oh. Well, are you, okay, first, how are you going to choose? You know, am, am I or am I not attached to the outcome of, a, of what's more of a mental exercise? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's, I've got to get my rear end on that chair or on that cushion, and I'm just going to sit and count my breath. And I'm going to, I'm going to chant the Heart Sutra, and I'm going to chant the, the five mindfulness trainings. Because that, I know, is going to help me be, to be more present. Oh, I'm bogged down with this delusion. What's wrong with me? Well, we're not going there. <laughs> we're not going to what's wrong with me. We're going to um, how can I live in a way that's beneficial to myself and yes. everyone else. So my idea, which I, I'm i going to do, and, you know, just a suggestion, I'm not going to say I'm going to give up all delusions. But what I am going to do, and only for one day, I'm just going to say today, I will be aware when I am not present. And, and I'm going to say, I'm going to do that for the rest of today. And I'm going to try it tomorrow. Because I think if I can bring awareness to the situation, if I notice that I'm not present, then I can shift it. Yes, Chuck? Okay, I was coming from a different direction. Uh, 
one definition of independence I've seen is uh, when you think for yourself and recognize truth for yourself, and when you uh, take action for yourself. You don't expect everybody to do your thinking for you or uh, take the actions you should take. Mm -hmm. That's very similar. Yeah. It's about awareness still. Yeah. Any other ideas about if you want to share? It's not mandatory. Um, the, the issue or the problem I see with what you just said about become aware when you're not present. Often when I'm not present, I'm just not present. So it's hard for me to. I, it would be after the fact, and I'd have to be, uh, so it, for me, it would, it would be, um, it would be simply an acknowledgement. You know, I was on a call today that I fell asleep. Uh, it was like five of us on a call, and I fell asleep for about 10 minutes. It was an hour and a half call. You know, and, and that's all that happened. I mean, there's... So I definitely wasn't present. And even now I notice my eyes closed every once in a while. So to me it's just it's an opportunity to acknowledge. Definitely we're not we don't want to make anybody wrong. Um, yeah, it's just so it's just to acknowledge that that has happened. And then um, I guess uh, then, then the decision is, do you want to, do I want to sl uh, slap some cold water on my face, or to, do I just want to um, recognize with compassion that uh, that sometimes I'm not present? Because I don't think we can be present all the time. I'll stop there. Yeah, I agree. Um, and. You can use the word acknowledge, and I can use the word aware. It's almost the same. To me, it's kind of the same thing. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're not going to be present every moment of the day. <laughs> but I think, you know, as uh, the five mindfulness trainings uh, teach us that there is such a thing as an aspiration. And the bodhisattva ideal is an aspiration. So um, I guess I would call this an aspiration, just to be more present. I think for me, what this will say is when I notice that my, when I notice that I am. Um, wanting something to be different in this very moment, that's, that's bringing my awareness to being present. Or when I notice that um, I'm lost in the past, as soon as I notice that, I can come back to the present. It's always a choice, you know. I can stay in the past if it's pleasant. Um, but anyway. And a few things that I think of in what you said, Bobby, and what others have shared. Um, and I think a thing along the lines of what Neil initially said, you know, that when I'm not aware, I'm not aware that I'm not aware. Right. And that's delusion, too. If mm -hmm. I'm delusive, how do, I, how do I see it? So, you know, our thing is, you know, awareness. And, um, and then also the part about judging right or wrong. Again, you know, something Neil said too, of judging right or wrong. It's like there's some things that I do in life that I think, yeah, that's probably wrong. Um, but there are some things that are hopes and dreams that I'm not going to throw on the bonfire mm -hmm. because we have to live this life. And, um, you know, uh, and, you know, sometimes we don't know quite what's coming, but we make the best decision in this moment. 
but right. I think your thing about awareness is right. that really helps us at least right now to help them make a wise, wise choice because we get in that danger of um, I must stop this or whatever. Um, you know, maybe there are some things that we should, but I think of that, um, I don't have the right word, the person who lives to be a, you know, drop all worldly goods. Oh, yeah. Um, and that usually, well, I won't say usually fails, that's setting up for failure, <laughs> failure, because we do, as you show, we depend on things and people. And even the person who moves to the mountains to live their life um, depends on the weather and animals and plants depends on folks not to come and mine their mountain that they're on and stuff. So there are, you know, we always have those things. Yeah. Um, so I think you wanted to um, share some readings. Oh, yeah, I'll read. We'll talk about five minutes or something. Okay. Yeah, I have a few readings that I was looking about. Um, independence and really interdependence. And two things, um, this is when we have two pages from Thich Nhat Hanh and a page from uh, Brother Chi Singh's book. Um, this is from Pieces Every Step. And this is a chapter called, um, Like a Leaf We Have Many Stems. One autumn day I was in a park, absorbed in the contemplation of a very small, beautiful leaf shaped like a heart. Its color was almost red, and it was barely hanging on the branch, nearly ready to fall down. I spent a long time with it, and I asked the leaf a number of questions. I found out the leaf had been a mother to the tree. Usually, we think that the tree is the mother, and the leaves are the children. But as I looked at the leaf, I saw that the leaves... Yeah, I just dropped the line. Okay. I saw that the leaf... But as I looked at the leaf, I saw that the leaf is also a mother to the tree. The sap that the roots take up is only water and minerals, not sufficient to nourish the tree. So the tree distributes that sap to the leaves, and the leaves transform the rough sap into evaporated sap. And with the help of the sun and gas and air, send it back to the tree for nourishment. Therefore, the leaves are also the mother to the tree. Since the leaf is linked to the tree by a stem, the communication between them is easy to see. We do not have a stem linking us to our mother anymore, but when we were in her womb, we had a very long stem, an umbilical cord. The oxygen and nourishment we needed came to us through that stem. But the day we were born, it was cut off, and we received the illusion that we became independent. That is not true. We continue to rely on our mother for a very long time, and we have many other mothers as well. The earth is our mother. We have great many stems linking us to our mother earth. There are stems linking us to the clouds. If there are no clouds, there will be no water for us to drink. We are made of at least 70% water, and the stem between the cloud and us is really there. This is also the case with the river, the forest, the logger, and the farmer. There are hundreds of thousands of stems linking us to everything in the cosmos, supporting us and making it possible for us to be. Do you see the link between you and me? If you are not there, I am not here. This is certain. If you do not see it yet, please look more deeply, and I'm sure you will. I asked the leaf whether it was frightened because it was autumn and the other leaves were falling. The leaf told me, no. During the whole spring and summer, I was completely alive. I worked hard to help nourish the tree, and now much of me is in the tree. I am not limited by this form. I am also the whole tree, and when I go back to the soil, I will continue to nourish the tree. So I don't worry at all. As I leave this branch and float to the ground, I will wave to the tree and tell her, I will see you again very soon. That day, there was a wind blowing, and after a while, I saw the leaf leave the branch and float down to the soil, dancing joyfully, because as it floated, it saw itself already there in the tree. It was so happy. I bowed my head, knowing that I have a lot, of, a lot to learn from that branch. So about that while I read this other, uh, which is different.
different, different, um, but might have some messages in there to think about. This is from Brother T. Singh's book, 108 Reflections. This is number 100, Together for a Global Awakening. Today, right now, is an opportunity to make a new beginning and let go of old ways that do not work. We have the opportunity to create a new beginning for ourselves and for the world. We come together to meditate, to dance, to sing, and to celebrate oneness. We gather to create a world where there is peace and harmony and love, where everyone feels cared for and nurtured, and where everyone can be supported on the path of enlightenment, the path of universal peace and unity. We are called to bring forth that ideal, to bring forth that imagination, and to bring forth that dream of world peace and oneness and unity. We join with others to connect to the power of spiritual practice, the power of meditation, the power of mindful living, and the power of collective practice. When this happens, we combine the ideal with the power of spiritual practice and community, and we change the world. We must do it together. The time of Lone Ranger spirituality is past. In the past, individuals have become enlightened on their own paths, but today we need collective enlightenment. We need the community to become enlightened with enlightened communities. There will be enough power to transform and shift the collective global energy. Together we have the opportunity to collectively shift for a global awakening. Today and every day we must take care of our world together. And there's some words in there that made me think of some of the words that we came up with. And, you know, Chi Singh was talking about um, these big ideals of peace and unity and Mother Earth. But I also think of that collective that we work together to have internet service at home and here, and that we, our messages get out through all of those people, all those things. The electric company takes all of us. Um, you know, you think, well, not me individually, but yeah, really. Really, all of these processes, all of these um, human interactions require all of us. Um, without the giver, there's no receiver. Without the receiver, no giver. So that's what I've got. Thank you. So anybody want to have anything to say or share about the reading that Cornell did or, or one of the exercises, anything? Yes, John? John John. What stood out toward the end of the least conversation with the master, he said, I am not limited by this form. And it made me think of part of the, the heart sutra that I chant, which is form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Thank you, John. more minutes if anybody else wants to share. <clears throat> I was reminded of a book whose title I cannot remember and whose author, the author's name I also cannot remember and I haven't read it. But <laughs> <laughs> I heard an interview with the author one time uh, and I, I love the concept of the book which was he spent like I think a year working on it and the premise was very simple. He wanted to in person, thank everybody who was responsible for his morning cup of coffee. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, you can't just thank the barista because they're not solely responsible for that cup of coffee. So mm -hmm. he thought, well, you know, the person who brought the materials to the coffee shop, I should thank them. So the delivery truck driver. Well, then, who made the delivery truck for him to drive? Who made the road for the truck to drive? Who, you know, and it spirals, you know, and you realize. There are no limits to who's involved in something as simple as your morning cup of coffee. It depends right. on all of them to right. make that, that happen. And yeah. You realize that's kind of a very uh, small, relatively simple thing. But, uh, and yeah, I was just thinking about that when it's like, you know, who do we depend on? Who depends on us? And you realize it just, you don't find the end of that. Right. Yes, Jim? Um, I, I, I guess, I don't know if you remember, uh, you ever think about how connected we are and how fragile it really is? Because 
when uh, there was a time period where <clears throat> it was, I uh, forget, about a couple years ago where they had the gas trucks didn't get up here to get gasoline. And I remember waking up and thinking, hmm, maybe I better stop by the gas station before I get to work. And sure enough, I was like the second or third car back, and by noon, everything was, gas was gone. So and I always tell people, and this is not to sound kind of morbid, but it's sort of like, you don't realize that if you had a real problem more than just being there, that, you know, the gas runs out, and then the grocery stores get a run on, you got no food, just everything comes, you know, crashing down, how much dependent we all are on all that, and have, you know, what, it's one thing and I've had gaskets at work, it's another thing if the groceries are out of food and there's no food around, so it's not like you can make it. So I always tell, you know, we were, you know there were kind of a nuclear exchange of a couple of countries, you know, people would freak out in houses, we all depend on each other, and so it's very important that what we take for granted is something that's very strategic, so. Yeah, absolutely. And like um, Paul's example, it's not just localized either. I mean, thinking about the coffee, um, the beans come from Costa Rica or somewhere mm -hmm. in Colombia or, yeah, lots of different places. It's a glo globally we are connected. We know that now from the mm -hmm. exchange not just from China. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anybody online want to speak up? Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, to be truly liberate ourselves, you have we have to uh, leave the like and dislike. Uh, that can be actually straightforward. You know, it's kind of hitting the attachment. But long back I heard is a. Uh, we, we have deliberated from uh, being incorrect and incorrect. Uh, and uh, life and death, you know, we, we, I mean, uh, always we've been sometimes thinking humanity, right? Uh, we can sacrifice anything else for humanity. But at the end, uh, if everybody live forever, we will have uh, no church hiding, <laughs> no space for our, for our you know, genera next generation, right? Anyway, so kind of, you know, just thought about it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes, Miguel? Yes, I was just thinking about interdependence and sort of the relief or the freedom that kind of comes from this realization that you're supported by mm -hmm. infinite, like a, an ungraspable amount of, of support and beings making your life possible so that you don't have to shoulder everything yourself. There's a lot of freedom in that and there's also a, a sense of freedom maybe that comes from Freedom's not the right word, but uh, from realizing that you're an important part of this ungraspable puzzle, you know, that, that, that you contribute to it somehow. Yeah, yeah. You're important. You yeah. matter. Um, I heard um, a quote recently that I really like. On it. It's um, three little statements. Everything changes. Everything's connected. Pay attention. Um, that's um, a quote from Joan Hirschfeld, and she was talking about, she says, um, Zen is basically three three things, three components. Everything changes, everything's connected. Pay attention. Anything else? Well, 
Well, I'm going to see if we have some announcements. I know we have a lot of things happening in July. Um, when is Lisa and Brett, Brent's uh, Brett? I think that's this Friday. Friday or Saturday? I think it's While you're Saturday. talking, I'll look it up. I think yeah. whichever one July 7th is. July 7th, whenever that is. And, um, uh, it's not the same <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll know in a minute. Uh, yeah, I'll look that up for all you want. Um, and on the 13th, which is a Wednesday, the Inner Being Sangha is um, hosting a special speaker. Um, he is a, a senior Dharma teacher in the Plum, Plum Village tradition. His name is Chan Lee. He uh, was trained personally by Thai, by Thich Nhat Hanh, and apparently they had a really good relationship because Thai named Chan Wee's children. And um, he helped to establish the um, Sangha in Austin. He was instrumental in Terry, uh, our Dharma teacher, instrumental in her um, probably in her OI ordination and also lamp transmission. So um, he has been living in, in uh, Vietnam for the last couple of years, few years. And so it's, um, it's kind of unusual that he would be coming to the States. And so I'm uh, welcoming him and inviting all of you to join. This will just be an online um, presentation Wednesday the 13th in the sound bath. Rest and renew sound bath by candlelight Saturday, July 9th. So it's on Saturday. Register in advance for that. On Sunday at our event, we have a special speaker. Yes, we do. Yeah, so. yeah Galen Godwin is um, kind of a um, Pioneer. <laughs> she comes from the Soto Zen tradition and she's the abbot of the uh, Houston um, Zen Center. She is also, and I, I'm sorry I don't remember the exact name, but she's the first woman to be appointed as the some kind of head honcho of the whole thing, you know. Um, She's, she was uh, appointed in, um, in Japan. She studied in Japan. And um, I, um, I hope I remember or look it up before she comes yeah. on Sunday. Yeah, it's like the International Soto Zen Association. Right, exactly, yeah. And she's the first woman to be head of that. Mm -hmm. So that, that was yeah. pretty groundbreaking. She was also one of the head of the San Francisco Zen Center. While she sang this on the West Coast, mm -hmm. she's been a guest with us a few times. Yeah, and yeah. always, always her talks are just really, really um, inspiring. Mm -hmm. So come next Sunday for yeah, sure. Next Sunday, she will be visiting. She will be coming online, but we will be here. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Anna has set up a. Um, it's in the newsletter. I think she set up a link to. Uh, Right. Uh, for Donna, so we can make a good donation towards um, uh, Roshi, uh, Caitlin Godwin. And there's also um, Andy's monthly uh, yoga meditation unit retreat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Cornell and Jody, Cornell and Jody are doing a. Yeah, on Friday, July 15th, here. That'll be. Um, Pieces Every Breath concert with Jody and Cornell. So it'll be flutes, uh, flutes, um, Tibetan bowls and gongs. Um, yeah. yeah. So a it's a good month of activities. So hope you'll join us for that. And we'll have yes, a bonfire to throw all of our dreams. <laughs> <laughs>